just for the sake of reality, doctors will go, have you ever seen this go really bad? Like it takes that much, especially with natural stuff. It's not like you're on that forever, but it's like until we go through these first few weeks to see, are you a low, medium or high reactor? Why not be extra supportive? We can always back off, right? But yeah, especially with natural things, I use a lot of, you know, herbal mixtures of support for adrenals or herbs and nutrients that support the adrenals. They definitely use a lot of B vitamins. They use some trace minerals. So usually those are either on their own or in, in the mix. Rhodiola can be very useful. Eleutherococcus for some people, ashwagandha for some people. Some people don't do so good with that, but some do. People that are really depleted and don't have blood pressure problems will we'll use licorice. And a lot of the people in this case are so depleted that like the, the glycerizing the, from the licorice is helpful. Normally what I favor are balance mixtures, though. I can't think of a reputable supplement company that doesn't have probably two or three different adrenal mixes that they have, right? But I always tell people like, you know, you get your nutrients, the B vitamins and stuff like that. The next layer for most people really, I think the botanical route is is a little more body friendly, right? Now, if they're already doing that, because we already know they got trouble there, I'll go to the next layer, which would be more of like adrenal cortex supplement. That's going to add a layer of support that matches a little bit better. If you were heading into this to do preparation, I would probably have the person doing both together and you know, doing it, but they may not need that for long term. But anyway, the adrenal yeah. side, that's a huge thing. The thyroid's a little trickier. It's it's usually the people I've seen where the thyroid gets involved, they already have thyroid balance problems and maybe they have like Hashimoto's or maybe they just have some thyroid resistance, whatever their flavor of thyroid problem, it might need a little more support because as soon as the adrenals jump up or as soon as we support them to meet this big immune thing, the thyroid tries to respond. And if it's sick and weak, it's not going to respond spot very well. So again, that's that side. The other side though of the prep is mechanical, really. A couple of very important things, but I think the most important is keeping the bile moving and having binders available. And a, a lot of people say, well, I'm you know at a phase where I don't need binders anymore or whatever. And it's like, well, if we start releasing stuff here, you're going to need binders. And so the reason for the bile movement is more if this immune activity goes on, which is inflammatory. And then we just mechanically are kind of opening these biofilms. The toxic material that comes out may be taken right up and maybe on its way over to the liver. A lot of that goes out through the bile. A, I don't want to reabsorb it from my bile, so hence the binder. But B, I want to keep the bile moving and flowing so it doesn't, you know, I don't get a hepatic problem backed up inflammatory gallbladder stuff. Yeah. But the other thing with the binders is, okay, it's grabbing bile, but also what about, I've just now driven some wedges into this giant, you know, community biofilm here. All the other junk that is floating out, I don't want you to reabsorb that. You're going to get, you know, headaches. You're going to get all sorts of problems. So the the some kind of binding, you know, through there. It's just basically re-injury if you don't bind this stuff up. And I'll tell patients that, you know, it's like if you scrape your knuckles on the cement and you, you leave them alone, they'll heal. But if you go out every day and re-scrape them, they're never going to heal. Well, if you if you are recycling all this junk, you're tight junctions, all the all the good things that make our gut healthy, we're just bombarding them over and over again. In regard to bile, that's more of a sort of a clinical decision. Normally, there's a whole bunch of things that just kind of help your bile keep yeah. moving. Tudka works really well for that. Adding turmeric to your diet or taking curcumin will do it if you tolerate that. Some people don't. Also, if you're already taking a phospholipid supplement for maybe healing or something like phosphatidylcholine or glycerophosphocholine or one of those, the phospholipids also just naturally sort of help that. So if you're already on it, it may be enough. But the idea being it's like the immune system, it wasn't operating at this level yesterday. Well, your bile flow and your gallbladder kind of is, is static based on what you're eating and everything else. Well, if all of a sudden we all this junk going out and the liver is filtering it and sending some out through the bile, it can make the bile sticky, essentially, you know, it's more surface tension. So all of these things, whether it's Tudka or any of the other herbs or phospholipids, they just help it, you know, keep moving. And then the binder helps to keep carrying it out. And most people understand 
understand this and most people go the other direction anyway, but some people, when they start breaking biofilms, will become very constipated and that's even more of a toxifying event. So that's the other thing you have to tell whoever you're working with right away. If you go from normal or, or even diarrhea oriented bowel movements to not having a bowel movement, the recycling of toxins is bad enough, but if you're not moving the stool out of your body, it's like, you know, really yeah. fast. That's kind of the prep really is just getting ready, help the adrenals, start to prepare to have a little bit more binder. And then once we start, we get a more, you know, or binder, look at what you're taking that might be helpful for the gallbladder flow. And then that's going to ramp up as the biofilm stuff starts. 